Hi Hill Knight, welcome to my channel. This is my review of Anna and the Apocalypse. I give the movie an A minus. The movie is a musical dark comedy Christmas film about the zombie apocalypse. Anna is an ordinary high school girl who wants to travel the world after graduation despite her father's wishes. And just when things are going pretty decently in her life, wouldn't you know it, the zombie apocalypse happens. So herself, her family, her classmates, and the whole town have to do their best to survive for as long as they possibly can. So basically you take Shaun of the Dead plus High School Musical with the dash of Die Hard and you got Anna and the Apocalypse. One of the things I liked about this movie that even though it's a comedy, it is not a parody. Uh, there are some uh, very cute uh, jokes that are sort of reference other properties, but it's not uh, trying to parody anything. And I definitely appreciate that. It's something to help keep that comedy but not parody aspect is that the zombies don't dance. Going into this movie, I was thinking to myself, those zombies, are they going to dance or not? Because if they do, you know exactly what it's going to be compared to. But no, the zombies don't dance. Occasionally they'll move to the uh, beat of the song, uh, but there's no uh, actual zombies dancing. Everyone dances around them or by them or sing while they're in the background. But no, the zombies don't dance. <laughs> and speaking of the songs, the songs are very nice, very charming. The dance routines are very uh, well done. Uh, nothing is on the level of the iconic uh, time warp or just about anything from Greece. But the productions are pretty nice. There are songs that you can sort of hum on your way back home or if you get the soundtrack, you know, just listen to the background. It's cute. But yeah, it's pretty solid overall. My favorite routine was It's That Time of Year, which is sung by the actress Marley Sui. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that name correctly. But anyway, uh, Marley Sui uh, has this routine uh, during the high school play, which is this sexy uh, Christmas song with a bunch of sexy male dancers, uh, similar to the sexy routine in Mean Girls. But unlike in Mean Girls, her character is just a nice gal who's, while pleasant looking, isn't some type of knockout. She's not uh, Regina George. She's not... Uh, Sharpay Evans, she's just a nice looking gal. Uh, now who knows, maybe uh, you know, 10 years from now she'll be uh, some type of a kind of beauty like uh, the next Charlie Theron or something, but for right now she's just a nice looking gal, she's a nice looking gal, she has a nice looking uh, boyfriend, but they're not uh, played up for sexy. They're sexy amongst each other and it's nice to see that uh, an ordinary uh, person can be sexy and sensual and alluring without falling into some type of uh, nonsense like something that say Amy Schumer or Rebel Wilson would do. As far as negatives go, most of my negatives are more personal preferences or pet peeves as opposed to as anything that's awful about the film. For instance, one of the things that really annoys me about uh, horror movies and action movies is when someone uh, doesn't arm themselves. There are s moments when several other characters, even though they've battled a zombie or had to fight for a little bit, they don't keep themselves arms. They don't keep a stick or a knife or some type of blunt object or even carry like a brick or a rock. You know, arm yourself. There's even a sequence when uh, Anna meets up with her ex-boyfriend and his running buddies and there's a uh, wonderful routine where he and his buddies are just beating up uh, various zombies with various uh, objects, and it's great. But the other people in the group, they don't arm themselves. And it's like, why? Why do you drop your weapons? There's another scene where this woman, uh, character, she takes uh, this stabbing object, and she's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to stab somebody if I'm necessary. And then she counters the zombie, uses it, and then just freaks out and runs off. And I'm like, take that stabbing thing with you, <laughs> you know, so that's just really annoys me how over and over and over again in action movies or in horror movies, someone will get like a good punch or good strike and not just keep wailing and wailing and wailing or at least hold the uh, object, hold the um, weapon uh, as they run away. Another thing that uh, I didn't like about the movie, and again, it's more of my preference, is that the ending is sort of lackluster, but it's done on purpose. There's a song called Hollywood Ending in which they talks about, you know, sometimes life is just ordinary, things don't go the way you want, and uh, stuff just happens, and, you know, things just sort of end. There's not always some grandiose Hollywood ending. And usually when there's that type of song, that means that either it is going to be some grandiose Hollywood ending, or we're just going to peter out and end. 
And so on, on the one hand, when this movie just peters out and ends, it's fine. But it is a musical, and a musical does sort of demand such a spectacular, grandiose ending. Uh, so the climax that the movie does have is nice and suitable, and the way it peters out in the ending is suitable. But at the same time, it's like, well, it's a musical. You're sort of wanting a little bit more. And because it just sort of peters out, several character arcs are just sort of left up in the air. For instance, there's one character, she wants to be this uh, serious journalist one there and has a, a concerns about the homeless. That goes nowhere. The ex-boyfriend, he had uh, issues with his father, but he's also kind of a jerk himself. That is sort of resolved. Uh, and even the villain, there's this uh, evil, mean, control freak uh, high school administrator who's just evil and mean for the sake of being evil and mean because I guess this movie needed a villain. Uh, that's like sort of just half developed. So yeah, uh, it does fit the movie, but I just want a little bit more. There's this great uh, video called by Janet Jackson called Miss You Much, which has a radio ending and a... Um, video ending. In the radio ending, uh, it closes and you hear Jackson go, that's the end? But the full video, uh, it comes up, back up and says, no. And there's about a minute uh, extra dance routine. And that's sort of what I kind of wanted. I just wanted a little bit extra. Not, uh, you know, not necessarily sequel baiting or anything, just maybe a, a dance routine during the credits or some type of uh, you know, grand film. Well, there is an animated uh, uh, in credit sequence was a very cute, but still, I just feel that as a musical, you do need to be a little bit grandiose uh, when you're ending. And yeah, if it's just a straight up drama, sure, Peter, I'll find. But no, it's a musical. Give me, give me some oomph. No. <laughs> so I knew next to nothing about this movie before I saw it, which makes sense because there's barely any advertising. It's on a very limited release. I mean, it's not even playing in certain states. And afterwards, as I did research for the video, I learned that the movie is based on a movie short called Zombie Musical, which basically means that they took a simple idea and expanded it into a feature-length film. And as a feature-length film expanding on the small premise, it's very solid. It has a great beginning, middle, and end. All the acting is fine. The routines are fine. The songs are fine. But as I said earlier, it's just not that little extra special, that little extra oomph, there's nothing really iconic, it's just sort of a, hey, that was nice. It's like going to a, a baseball game, uh, and you have a nice time at the park, and your team actually wins, but at the same time, there was never no uh, great double play or triple play, there was never uh, an amazing moment where someone steals the base, there was never really a going, going, gone kind of thing, it's just like, okay, well, my team won, it was a nice time, uh, but, you know, you're not going to remember it a couple days later unless you're a super fan. So yeah, uh, I do like this movie. I recommend this movie if you can find it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it just doesn't have that little extra oomph that really sets it high and above uh, all the films that I've seen this year. If it did, then it would have easily been one of my favorite movies of the year. But as such, it's solid from beginning to end. It's nice. It's a very great uh, independent movie. And it definitely earns an A minus grade. Okay, those are my thoughts on Anna and the Apocalypse. Thank you very much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.